Hi guys, I'm Mario Frado and this is Making the Case. So two Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies were shot in an ambush in Compton, California. Now these two deputies were just minding their own business, parked in their patrol car, when this unknown suspect came up and shot them both through the window. Now they were shot multiple times, including shots to the head. Take a look at that footage here. So as you can see from this footage, there's no excuse for this attack. It was really cowardly. Both deputies are in critical condition right now. One of the deputies is a 31-year-old mother with a 6-year-old son. The other deputy is a 24-year-old male. They were both rookies and they're fighting for their lives right now. So my thoughts and prayers go out to those deputies and their families. Shortly after these deputies were transported to the hospital, Black Lives Matters protesters showed up and were blocking the entrance to the hospital and cheering, we hope they die. The Los Angeles County Sheriff Department actually put out a tweet condemning this and asking the protesters to stop blocking the entrance. Listen to this tweet here. The tweet reads, To the protesters blocking the entrance and exit of the hospital emergency room yelling, we hope they die, referring to the two LA sheriffs ambushed today in Compton, do not block emergency entries and exits to the hospital. People's lives are at stake when ambulances can't get through. Now it's bad enough that some dirtbag coward would shoot two innocent cops, but how disgusting is it that you have these lowlifes outside of a hospital actually blocking the entrance and cheering for the injured officers to die? Now this isn't the first time we've heard this kind of rhetoric from Black Lives Matters. Remember, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, or what do we want, dead cops, when do we want it now? And also remember, they actually did kill five police officers back in Dallas in 2016. So unfortunately, this really is nothing new for Black Lives Matter. Now the media and the Democrats love to say that President Trump's rhetoric is responsible for violence. They like to blame him for the death in Charlottesville a couple years ago. But what responsibility do the Democrats bear for the violence on the left? Especially all this anti-police rhetoric. Who created an environment where people will actually cheer we hope they die outside a hospital where two officers have been shot in the head. And what message is the Biden campaign sending when they'll bail out rioters who are attacking police and burning down police stations? And then Joe has the nerve to say that he's willing to defund the police? In his own words, come on, man. Does anybody believe that this shooter in Compton was a Trump supporter? Does anybody believe the people outside the hospital cheering for the cops to die are Trump supporters? We know which side these people are on. So Joe Biden needs to take responsibility for his rhetoric about systemic racism in policing and the vilification of law enforcement. I won't be surprised if the Biden campaign tries to spin this and somehow blame President Trump or the police for creating division. If two rookie police officers are being shot by cowards in an ambush and then people are cheering for their deaths outside the hospital and then people want to defund the police and the Democrats are cheering for it and actually making it part of their platform, who in their right mind would want to become a police officer right now? This type of rhetoric has serious consequences, and the Democrats and their terrorist wings of Black Lives Matter and Antifa are playing a very dangerous game right now. I really hope that the American people wake up fast. If you are still an undecided voter, I hope a situation like this makes your decision easy for you, because this election really is between Joe Biden or America. Guys, if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thanks, guys.